Like you got a winning hand until you dealt the wrong card It ain't fair, but you're not alone Down and out or high and dry in the darkest valley Or the coldest night you'll find You're not alone And the song of in your heart Where a story can give you a brand new start You don't have to travel this big bad world all of your own Cause it's better when we do it together All mixed up and upside down feels like around that ain't right you're not alone when it all goes south and life gets tough and you've been knocked down and the weeds are rough you just fight 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 you're not alone with a Welcome to the Palaha Chautauqua. I am your host, Christopher Palaha. You are joining me live right now on Instagram. If you are, welcome to the show. Welcome to this community where we're just going to take a pause at the beginning of every week. And we're going to try to open up the meaning of life a little bit. It's philosophical. It's spiritual. It's all about art. It's about God who created everything and all things. Um, you guys are going to join me live and we're going to discuss things. Today's topic is worship. What does it mean to worship things? Um, so hello, I just want to greet you all for a minute. I want to say hi to Kathy, hi to Vicky, hi to Barb, hi to Dolly Brown. Hello everybody. How are you guys? Look at this. Hey, Katie Lindy's there. Hello, Katie Morris. My sister-in-law's watching live. We got Miss Bella, we got Lauren, we got so many people. I have a very special show for you today. It's all kind of mapped out. Um, I've got two guests that are gonna join me today to talk about worship because, and I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, I, I, I wanted to start this semester off with the idea of basically like what church would do, where, where you just start with worship and you kind of just lift your heart up and you give thanks and praise to the creator God of the universe, and before we head into this semester and start talking about wisdom and the Beatitudes and sin and the armor of God, I wanted to kind of drop in and talk about what it means to worship and what it's meant to me as a, as a man to worship in my life. Um, and so, of course, I do my homework all week, and I jumped online, and uh, man, worship is intense. There are so many different theological, like, I mean, it was like a rabbit hole of, of like, what's the right way to worship, what's the wrong way to worship, what's considered worship, what's not considered worship, where it becomes, you know, when things themselves become the idols of worship and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, I think this is a little outside my pay grade because as you know, and I've said this before, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a theologian, I do not have a, a PhD in the Bible or theology or anything like that, I'm an actor. Um, but I'm a ha, I'm alive, I'm a human being. I've got breath in my lungs. I got my heart beating right now from that little song I just sang and jumping on in front of 174 people currently, um, which gets you a little nervous. So let's go back. Yom Kippur was this week. Yom Kippur and the Jewish holiday is the it's a, it's a, a an atonement that comes after the New Year, Rosh Hashanah. It's a time of reflection, fasting, and repentance. And I always love the Jewish holidays because they fall like in the best times of the year. And I think that when we start school at the end of August or September, it does feel like a new year. And I know that January 1st is the Gregorian calendar. That's where we do it. Um, but there's something about September and the coming of the fall equinox and all of this thing of like 
the season of spring and summer, it's about to end and this newness that we're, we're walking into with fall and autumn and the winter. And there's a, a quieting of the soul and a quieting of the spirit and a quieting of nature. And everything kind of starts to shut down in the northern hemisphere anyway. And um, so, so I just wanted to reflect on that for a minute. And that gets me thinking about, well, what does it mean to be a person who is appreciative of life? And we've been talking a lot about life and death and over the last course of this year, especially specifically with COVID. And when we are faced with death and this concept of death, and it scares us, uh, it can shut us down. We can start to live lives of fear, right? Well, worship is the opposite of that. Worship is the moment where you stand your ground firmly and you lift your heart and you lift your eyes and you, in some cases, you lift your arms up and you just praise an unseen maker and you give thanks and you sing out in some cases, but not always, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, I made notes. That's how intense it is. Um, so... Worship, rabbit hole, theologically speaking. Went online, did a little recon, was overwhelmed. Said it, one thing says one thing. You, some churches you sing with instruments, some you sing without, some you don't sing at all. Um, this summer, we have a friend who was in an awful, awful car accident. And she was in a coma for a while. And has a lot of brain trauma. She's come out of this coma. That her mom and her dad and her family have rallied and they have been prayerfully supporting her and they have been i mean the doctors and the nurses the best medical care you could have this happened in the spring and it's all summer we, she's in florida and so we've seen her a couple times and on one of these instances we went and we sang and you guys know my son caleb and you know he sings um and he was we just started singing songs of worship and something happened in that hospital room. Something overwhelming happened. All of us had tears in our eyes. I looked at her mother, who was exhausted, but who had been strong up until that point, let go for a minute. I looked at this nurse, this sweet nurse who was in that room, and she was singing right along step, knew the words. Um, and her, you could tell that she was weary and that she was just serving people and catering to people and trying to nurture and help people. And in this moment, she was restored. Um, and then the little girl who had brain trauma, there was something that was just deep and instinctive and these songs reached a part of her that allowed her to wake up from this sort of dream that she was having, this, this living, like a living dream. And even she said, I, I want to wake up, I want to wake up, help me wake up. And so there's this idea of what worship can offer us. Um, and then another time I was playing in the ocean and I was talking to God and I was praying and I was just, I was kind of crying out because I think it was a time of need for me. And, but, but I wasn't just saying, you know, Lord, I need stuff. I was thanking God and I was kind of praising him. I remember I was, I was in the ocean praising him in this particular moment. This is in the Pacific Palisade, in this, this Pacific Ocean. And it was a calm day in the sea that day. And the waves were gently rolling in and, and I was talking to God and it was just me and the ocean and the creator of the universe and I'm just having a conversation and just really in a moment of worship. And I'll never forget this, this wave, as if God lifted up the water and just kind of splashed me with this water, this wave. This wave kind of hit me in this really playful way, like it had... Like, honestly, it felt like God was answering me in a way that he was like, hey, buddy, I hear you, and I see you, and I love you. And, um, and that was only because I was in a place of supplication. I was in a place of openness. I was in a place of listening. I was in a place of praise and worship where I was able to almost be in communication with God, which is kind of an incredible feeling. Um, and then another time, I could tell you about when I was really young, I was hiking. So a lot of a lot of worship for me clearly takes place in nature, where I go and I get quiet and I walk and I'll pray. And part of it is a thanking of the Lord of, of the things that I'm grateful for. And part of it is what I need or where my heart is or things I'm working on or wanting. Or 
Um, and then a part of it is just where my thoughts go. Like God will just start to drop in like my thoughts and I'll just start to meditate on, well, why am I thinking this? And I lift it back up and it's just this kind of cycle of where I'm at, which restores me, which gives me restoration. And this one particular day, I was climbing in Mount Rose. I'm from Reno, Nevada. And Mount Rose is the tallest peak in the Sierras in that part of the mountain range. It's like, I forget how high it's, 13, 000, almost 13,000 feet, maybe 12, 11. I don't, I don't know how high it is. I do, but I forget right now. Um, and I remember I made this decision to thank God for every single day of my life. And I would remember, as a, it was a long hike. I had all day. And I literally just started praying about all of these and I would remember when I was as early back as I could my earliest memories and they're all like two two three years old and I started remembering all these things and thanking God and it was for the good things and the bad things and it was all of these events that took place in my life and I would just say thank you for this day and thank you for the time I was seven and I would I aged all the way up and I think at the time I was a freshman in high school or maybe a junior in high school so anywhere between you know 15 and 17 years old and um I started to have this feeling of euphoria. And again, there was a connectedness that I was experiencing. And I think that for me, it was proof that this God that I pray to, this God that I believe in is alive and well and, and wants to be in relationship with me. So that's where my faith sort of has a safe harbor. So when I'm talking to people, in the world, and I know that there's a ton of people who are watching this thing right now who aren't Christians at all, and who don't know the Christian narrative, and who are like, I don't know, you know, what you're talking about because that's not what I believe in. But we all, I don't know. That's that's the question. So for me, and for the Christian narrative, where I'm where I'm coming from, I've been able to plug in a few times and touch the source and feel it. And then on Sundays when I start church and they do worship. There is something that happens when the music kicks up and you start singing songs and you're just, you're in this room with all these people that you're in community with, but you may not know them all personally. And you're just singing your heart out and it may not be amazing. And maybe you're trying to harmonize and whatever it is. And every once in a blue moon, there is this feeling of being overwhelmed. And I like to call it by the Holy Spirit where I'm just overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit where something physically enters my body spiritually and I am quickened and awakened to the presence of God and I'm in communion with God I'm in a, a, a tangible relationship with God and that's amazing stuff because what it does is it gives me gunpowder for the next seven years literally years um, so what is this idea of worship well as I started to unpack it I was like yeah we can we can play music we can sing and and when you're feeling blue, you can turn Christian music on on the radio, or you can put on classical music, and you can, you could, you could transport yourself musically. And I said, but what happens when we start really living our lives as an act of worship? Like, what happens when we take a deep breath and start worshiping with our lives? Now unpack this with me for a minute, because what I'm talking about is what I think and what I've, what I've arrived to in the last six or seven years of my life is something that, that I don't hear often talked about. And then I happened to have a conversation with a friend and he happened to send me some texts and I was going to read the texts and I said, well, I'm going to bring him on. So I'm going to bring him on in a minute. Um, but what happens if you and I start living our lives as acts of worship so that when we wake up in the morning, the actual act of waking up is an act of worship. And when we brush our teeth in the morning, the actual act of brushing our teeth is an act of worship. And when I go live with you guys, what is this if, if, what if this is an act of worship to God? What if I treat it as such, right? What if when I'm talking to my wife, the, the, the way that I temper my words or what I do, what if that is an act of worship? Or when we make lunch for her, when she writes a note, I mean, I know that my wife, Jillian, she writes a note every single day to all three kids that they have a, a note in their lunchbox. And she's done this with a lunch bag or whatever it is now. Um, and she's done this since preschool. We have, 
shoe boxes filled with these love notes and these little reminders that they are loved, that is an act of worship. That's an amazing act of worship. So what if when we do laundry or when we clean a toilet or when we fill our gas tank up or when we are talking to people on the phone who are standing in the way of something that we want or something that we need, and what we want to do is rip their head off and yell at them, we all of a sudden gather our senses and say, this is, my, I'm gonna, this is an act of worship. I'm going to worship right now. God, and I'm going to, how do I become this thing of this, this vessel of worship right now in this moment? Um, and I started to think about it, and I unpacked it, and I was looking up where it comes in biblically. And Jesus, in Luke 19, he's talking about other things, and it's, it's, it's out of reference a little bit, but Jesus says, so the Pharisees are like, you know, from the crowd, teacher, get your disciples under control, and Jesus says, if they keep quiet, stones themselves would start to sing shouting praise hosanna hallelujah so jesus is saying it's 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 if it's not the people it's going to be the rocks themselves and then i jumped into revelations because i remember something from revelations and there's two places where there's just this when when there is a new jerusalem and when there is this new you know when it, when it's when when the final days have come one is, in Revelation 22, servants will offer God's service worshiping. They look on his face, their foreheads mirroring God. And then before that, in 7, Revelation 7, 9 through 12, he says, I looked again, I saw a huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there, all nations and tribes, all races and languages, and they were all standing, dressed in white robes, waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb, and heartily singing salvation to our God on his throne, salvation to the Lamb. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Oh yes, the blessed and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever and ever. Amen. Oh yes. So here we are, worshipping. And then, and this, this goes to my friend Rich, and I'm gonna, I am going to bring him on here in a minute. Um, he, he said, go back to Romans 12, 1 through 2. And I'll read that to you real quick. So in Romans, it says, so here, and this is, this is, this is Jesus. So here, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And I'm going to read the first part again. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. And one last thing before I bring Rich on. Um, my son, Micah, was just talking to me. And I'm going to change my... You're going you're gonna to see what I look like without the light. Um, <laughs> ding! So... He said, you know, what is it? And I said, when you're in worship, every day, when you're in worship, you're, fo you're doing something. You're in, you're in purpose. There's a purpose to your existence, right? You are in the act of worshiping and praising God, whether it's while you're folding laundry or while you're doing dishes. Whoops. Um, and you are, you're, you're doing something. You're in action. When you're not, that's all of a sudden when your life makes room for being cynical or starting to critique or grumble or lusting or being covetous and desiring things that aren't yours that other people have, or that's when, when we're not doing the thing that we're made to do. That's when all this other stuff starts to enter the picture because there's space for it, because we're not doing the one thing that we're supposed to be doing, so then we start doing things that we're not supposed to be doing, which we're gonna get to later in the Chautauqua. And so, what I said to my son, Micah, was that, you know, what is a light bulb? What is a light? Light's purpose, it serves no, this thing serves no other purpose 
than to shine, right? And so when this light is off, it's useless. But when it's on, it's this thing, it's this big, bright, beautiful beacon, right? And that's what humans are. Our, our job is to shine like a light, but when it's off, you know, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and my, you know, whatever. And it, but it, it, it doesn't start to critique its shell and it doesn't start to contemplate this thing. But we do when we're not shining. We start to contemplate and critique ourselves and we start to critique other people. You should see this place. It's a madhouse. I got drums, I got guitars. Um, and so, there we go. Um, and so that to me, ultimately is what worship is. It's this, it's this idea of fulfilling our purpose. And if we're not loving each other, then we should be focused on loving God. Um, all right, let me see if I can find Rich. Hang on one second. Because he said something to me that was kind of amazing. Let me see. Rich, where are you at? Let me see. There we are. Okay. Um, and I think I can get into something with him when he's on the phone. So I'm going to send a because he said something to me in a text that kind of, <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure you guys hear this because I know that when I join, when I ask people to join, it, it does something crazy. Hey, how you doing, hey. man? <laughs> I'm good. This is my first I'm... time on Instagram, so I had to I had to go through all the permission thingies. <laughs> You're like, yeah, 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 I accept, I accept. Um, yeah. So welcome, welcome, Rich, to the Plaha Chautauqua. Thanks, As you can friend. see, I've got like this, it's like, I'm, I'm, it's a one man show here. And I was trying to work my light and I'm hitting the symbols in the background and I'm awesome. So you and I had this conversation this week yep. and you're actually the guy who's going to run me down the attitudes and we're going to, we're, we're going to do a little Bible study on the Sermon of the Mount, which I'm going to then talk about here. So I'm sure that people this semester, they're going to get used to seeing you because I don't want to just plagiarize <laughs> everything that you say and be like, well, this is what I say, because you sent me this text and one of my philosophies of life is that when God created the earth long, long time ago, his presence was felt everywhere and in everything. Mm. And I would argue that that's where paganism sort of was born because people yeah. would see God in the trees and they'd see God in the moon and God in the sun and they would worship God because they felt him everywhere. Right. And then of course, God calls Abraham out into the desert and says, Hey, I want to introduce myself. I'm the one true God. Right. Judaism is born, Christianity is born. And so here we are thousands of years later, we're in this moment and we're getting pulled further and further away from our source. We have phones and we have technology and we have drugs and we have so many things that can pull us away from our creator. And I think one direct, like one direct plug right back into the source is worship. Yeah. And you texted me something and you were like, and your text, and I'm just going to let you speak because it was so beautiful. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. You texted me something about Genesis and about sort of it filled in the pieces. So I'm going to just hand it off to you for a second. Hey, thanks. Uh, first of all, you have the coolest people on here. They're all saying hi. And so, hey, uh, <laughs> be with with you um and uh some some of the folks were, were just texting in these phenomenal verses like first thessalonians i i tried to remember your name whoever you were um that about praying without ceasing and stuff so um it's cool to be part of this community that you put together here you, you did you didn't lie they are cool people it's cool people right pretty fun i mean the uh, fact that we're doing this on social media it, like on instagram is what unreal yeah unreal yeah and and this morning the irony is uh, I was with my little church down at the beach, uh, down by Point Magoo, and we set up a little camera and did Facebook from there. And so, you know, there were like maybe 15 of us there, and then there was like 20 more watching at home. And here you've got 180 in the, what a world, right? It's great, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of amazing. So, uh, do you want me to get into the Genesis 1 stuff a little bit? Yeah, I just, I loved what you had to say, and I was going to, and, and, for me, this, this idea of, you know, I think when a bird, when I'm, when I'm looking, so when I'm at the beach and I see the waves crashing, to me yeah. that's symbols and the ocean is giving worship and trees, like their arms are reaching up towards heaven and that's worship. But I go outside and the birds are singing 
Totally. And that light bulb shining, it shines because it's made to shine. And the birds yeah. sing because they're made to sing, but God made them to worship. And God made yes. them to reach up towards him. Yeah. So he made us. And he made us as image yeah. bearers. And our yeah. job is to worship. So, I mean, biblically, I, I was going in, I'm like, yeah, it's like everywhere Jesus is saying. So, what? So yeah, so go ahead and, and kind of drop Dude. it. You just did it all. I'm just going to go back to being one of the watch. So, um, you know, when you first texted me about this yesterday, um, but we had talked about it earlier in the week a little bit too. When you texted me about this, um, I don't know why, but the first thing I went to was Genesis chapter one and that um, some much smarter people than me, um, people like N.T. Wright, and Dallas Willard, and people like that have all said that, that Genesis chapter one bears the marks of an early temple um, narrative where um, there's a certain way that ancient people used to write how kings or priests um, would build a temple to a God. And, um, and that Genesis one bears some of those, those same hallmarks. And so um, when you go back and read Genesis chapter one, do it with, um, and I would encourage everyone watching, if you've never read the Genesis story, go back and reread it, read it. And if you've read it before, go back and reread it. And think about what if this is God building a temple in which his presence can rest in all of creation. And then he makes each of his image bearers, the priests and priests, priestesses. How do you say that? Priestesses. Priest priest right. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. Um, and it's our job and our vocation, our calling not simply to on Sunday go into some building, right? And, and now the good news is God is so good that we can go into a building and join our hearts with other people. And I'm the same way. Like I get to, I get to lead your sons, right? As yeah. bring a guitar thing and boy, they harmonize beautifully and say, and, and they're, but the cool thing about, um, I wasn't going to talk about this, but it works, right? The cool thing about your sons when they worship is they're not doing anything different. It's just another way for that worship to come out, right? <laughs> they're, they're just singing what's already inside of them. Yeah. I think that, was, that comes all the way from the way God designed the world, is he didn't make the world to be a place in which we go into some secular space for like, you know, six days, and then we finally find something holy. It's all holy. It's all his. And um, the third chapter of The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard talks about God's joyous being, that uh, he has oceans full of fish that are constantly um, out there for our amazement, right? And that we'll, we'll, we'll fill an aquarium with them. And just, like, we went to the Long Beach Aquarium last weekend. You right. know, jellyfish, man, like, right? Like, right. Right. how many hours can you spend in front of the jellyfish tank? And God has oceans teeming with fish that he can see all the time. <laughs> And, and he's just filled with joy, right? So all of creation, the kind of the, the big idea is that worship is about taking our correct role in creation as the people who get to take care of this amazing temple that God has built. And when our lives are ordered correctly with God at the top and our own health and then loving our neighbor as we love ourselves and all that kind of stuff and stuff like stuff and lust and coveting and all that kind of stuff, when that goes and takes its proper role, right. then we get to have authentic moments of worship in, um, in our everyday lives. Is that enough to get us going? You That's want some more? No, it's amazing to get us going. I'm listening. I mean, I'm like, keep, keep going. Yes, <laughs> keep going. I know, that, and I just want to let you know, Rich, that there's a lot of um, texts that are coming in. People are like, you're like kicking off a ton of conversations. And then okay. when this, so right now during the live, it's all over your face, but the yeah. minute it, it gets pinned into the video, um, the texts go away and people are oh, just going to see you. So, so I know that right now, and I don't want to stop people from talking. So just go ahead. I know it's distracting because um, I'm no. I imagine what it looks like on your end, but not at all. I'm yeah. happy. To cover they, it. Won't, they won't I don't, see. I don't have one of those magic lights. I, if I if I have a light that makes me look like Chris Palaha, I'll be happy. Like I get you one, Rich. I can get you one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you one. Um, I'm getting you a hat. So, so, and then, so as, as his image bearers, then talk to, like, talk a bit, then unpack a bit about, so everything is in its place. And you said, loving God and then health, right? And then loving each other. And then when all the other stuff gets pushed way down on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, what does an act of worship, like, what does worship look like? 
Like yeah. for you, for example, for you. Yeah. Do you feel like you have to go to church and, and pick up a guitar to worship? Or can you do worship? Like, can you do simple oh. acts of worship throughout the day? What does that look like for you? So good. You know, somebody just chimed in. Um, they said, I don't think a building confirms worship. Sorry, Rich. Or, uh, you know, and I just want to say, like, if I if I gave that impression, then that's I, I'm making the unpoint I was actually trying to make, right? Like the point is that um, you can go into uh, a, a thousand person building or a three thousand person building and sing your guts out with three thousand people, or um, or not, and you can still worship, right? So so my little church, we have we we one of our things is we'll never own a building because we don't need one, right? Like um, and and there's um, I'm going to answer your question a little more directly in a minute, but there's a scripture that talks about that. I think it's in first Peter that we are living stones uh, being built into the temple of God. And it's a plural for stone. Like you, you hear all the time, the body is a temple. That's a plural word for body, right? Like it's, we are living stones. So you can't do this Christian thing alone. Um, together, what God's up to in the world is he's changing individual lives to become the image bearers that he wants us to do to who he wants us to be through Christ. So that we, we look a little bit more like him and then he builds that. Um, uh, oh no, you're all good. Leah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then he builds us into like this community that looks like a temple that he can inhabit. Right. So, um, and that's, that's not from going into a building every Sunday, although that may be part of it. It's from what we do with our everyday lives and that, that Jesus is forming us into be people more like him. So for me, um, I'll just be really frank here. Every time I don't get angry, I'm worshiping because anger is my pet sin, right? Like everyone has kind of one that just kind of, you know, it's yeah, easy to do. It's the go-to, right? It's the go-to, yeah. And, um, and people way smarter than me have said, you know, your, the state of your soul is revealed when someone cuts you off in traffic, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. We're all in trouble. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we're all in trouble. And, um, and so um, for me, an act of worship is, um, is when I get cut off in traffic. And one of my kids caught me in this the other day because I preach about this all the time and my shortcomings here. Um, I want to first alert the person with my horn that they've cut me off and, and do what I need to, to keep myself safe and maybe let them know that they shouldn't have done that. And then I want to naturally without effort, pray for them and pray for their good. And so the other day I'm on the freeway and somebody cuts me off. Oh, it was an Audi. Whoever's driving that black Audi. <laughs> <laughs> and my next words were what the actual, and then I stopped myself because there was a kid in the car. Right. Yeah. And I really, I'd had a hard week and I was like, I was a little low and worn down. So sleep comes into this, right? Cause you want to be rested, like right. the whole rhythm of life thing. Right. right. And so I what actual, and then the kid, my family member who was next to me, who I was so proud of, remembered a sermon I'd given like the week before. And she goes, bless you. And I went, Oh, you know that moment when your kids are just much better. Yeah, than you? They're just so much smarter. When they bring the yeah. wisdom out, you're like, yeah. That, that happens. I, yeah, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> so I know your kids. It happens to you too. Right? Yeah, it so, happens to us all the time. So, so to me, like one of the forms of worship of my life is when, like that pray without ceasing idea. Mm -hmm. Like um, I think it was Brother Lawrence who said, it's not that I would pray, that my, but that my life would become prayer, right? That, I don't want to, I don't want to notice the moments where I'm connected with God. I want to notice the moments when I'm not, I want to be so connected to him um, that I naturally, when someone does something that makes me mad, say, bless you. Right. So that, so that the people outside, the people around me can see my good work and glorify their father in heaven. Right. Right. That's right. what, that's the way Jesus put it. And, um, and, uh, the other time I really worship. So I notice I, I'm worshiping when, when I do less bad stuff, right? Or when I do the bad stuff and I, and I instantly go, I didn't sense Christ in that, right? Like, I, and I don't want to do it again. And then I put in some spiritual disciplines or something. I start practicing some kind of habit. So for me, that's saying, bless you when I get cut off or practice the discipline of trying to, um, trying to see every person I meet during the day as an image bearer. Right. That my first thought, 
I got to stop you on that. Yeah, uh, go. For it. Okay, so to treat everybody that you meet throughout the day oh. as an image bearer. So I was That's just true. talking to Micah, and I said, you know, what you need to do is pray to see, you know, and it was certain people we were talking about, but I said, pray to see them through God's eyes. Yeah. Oh. And pray to have the, like God's heart towards mm -hmm. that person because if we can do that, that changes the game, doesn't it, brother? It does. Like if I look at you and if I look at every person that I meet, yeah, as an image bearer of God, and I see mm. them with God's eyes and I love them with God's heart, I'm no longer, I'm not treating anybody like I own them or that they're a different or an other or any of the things that we're being radicalized right now and being torn apart as a country and as a world and as a people, oh, oh, right? I mean, it changes yeah. like everything. It changed it, it. I, now I didn't come up with this. This was uh, in a book by Wayne Jacobson, who, um, who I got to hang out with for a little bit. He was one of the co-authors of the shack and um, he taught me yeah. a lot. And, um, yeah. and he, uh, in one of his books, there was a pastor who was at a mall and as he was walking past people, he would see people with tattoos or see people, you know, of different race or whatever. And he realized all of a sudden it was like the Holy Spirit gave him these, like, you see a tattooed person, you automatically think less. Like he wasn't even trying to, you know what I mean? Right. And so he decided at that point to go sit in a lounge, like one of those leather chairs at the mall or whatever, and just prayed, Lord, let me see people as image bearers first. And it changed everything in his life. And so I read that. And now whenever I teach um, uh, a discipleship class to adults or to kids or whatever, that is always one of the disciplines that uh, usually somewhere midway, midway through the semester, I send kids out in the hallway and I say, here's your assignment. You got 20 minutes. Everyone that you see, they can't know it, but you are going to consciously say they are an image bearer. That is someone that, you know, that, that great St. Patrick's prayer, uh, Christ in me, Christ in the eye of everyone who looks at me, right? Yeah. Christ on the, on the tongue of every person who speaks of me, right? Like that whole idea that Christ is in, uh, that if, if it's true, I love what you said about the pagan world and all that stuff. If it's true that John chapter one, that he is the logos, the eternal logos, that the, the purpose for everything that was made from, like everything was made through him, or like Paul says, in him we live and move and have our being, right? If that's true, then that means Christ is in every single person that we see. And that doesn't mean that everybody's a Christian, right? Right, but, right, right, right. But the, they don't have to be a Christian to be loved. Or, or they don't have to even, they don't even have to go along with Christian beliefs or values. Like, that's the radical idea behind Christ, is right. you don't have to believe a word of what his, he says. And when you meet one of his followers, you'll be treated better than you've ever been treated before. And I, I feel like right. yeah. you put your finger on the pulse that we've lost that today. Yeah. And it's interesting because this whole tangent was tied into the act of worship of you seeing everybody as an image bearer so that it's a deliberate decision that we have to make, right? Because mm -hmm. Christianity, I mean, let's talk about it. Like it's a yeah. story and we choose to believe that it's a story that's real. Totally. We choose to believe that Jesus was a real person born in yep. a real place to a real mm -hmm. woman, died on a real cross. Roman really? Empire, and there is historical evidence that this was a real person. And oh, absolutely. Historical evidence that Jesus was real. Absolutely. And we as Christians to believe that this guy is the son of man, that he is God, and that if we follow him. And I've, I've you know, as, a, as an actor, I've, and I told you this, I think, on our lunch this week. Yeah. When people will be like, do you want to be a star or whatever? And, and that for so long, I wanted people to be reminded of Marlon Brando when I acted or like, I wanted, you know, I wanted, I used to talk about having my own, you know, like this idea of being a star. And I mean, I was just, I was poleaxed on a hike one day where God was like, why don't you, why don't you get people to, to think of me when they see you? Act? Like, why don't you remind people of Jesus? And I was like, oh, and instead of being a star, why don't you be a moon that reflects mm. the sun's light? Just be a little orbit of something that is insignificant, a chunk of rock in space, but it's beautiful because it has significance because it oh. reflects the sun's light. And I was like, you know what? I got to empty myself out. <laughs> I got to start <laughs> over because I was chasing, you know, empty dreams. And so, yeah, man. Um, wow. Yeah. But 
dude, I, I, I'm going to have, I, I hope that, I hope that you're comfortable with this because you know Dallas Willard and Dallas Willard wrote a book called, I know it's backwards, but that's it's just, called, that's just from my heart that you did that. Yeah. yeah it's called the divine conspiracy. Yeah. And um, it talks about kingdom living and it's something that I've been talking to people about for over a year now. And when you mentioned in chapter three, that God has the entire ocean, to find delight in, like we have an aquarium to find delight in. It, again, it tickled my soul because totally. I really genuinely believe that we are, we are on this planet for a short time and it is purpose driven. And that purpose is to- The worship. Find, yeah, to find God, to know God. Yeah. And to all of a sudden to worship and to love him. And then that love becomes so contagious that we can't help but share it with the uh, with other people, with you, and with me, and with our spouses, with our children, with our communities, and then ultimately strangers, and and never more in my life. And I'm an adult now, and this is my generation. This is our generation, and I think that we're called to stand up a little bit. And I think that I keep talking to people about being warriors of light, mm. and to take up to take up just arms of love and and, totally. and you know and shields of faith. And and so we're going to get into the armor too, but like there is a call to and not to it's not about conversion it's not about well everybody has to be on the same page no but like you said it's not about being a christian but when people who aren't a christian meet us it should be they've never been treated better in their lives oh, they they should sense there there should be like a uh some a, a friend said there's like a, fr a different fragrance from them right like that yeah just be like a um uh and it, and it, in some ways, it should be like off-putting. Like, what? Why were they so nice? You know, like, right, like what's up with them? What do they want? Yeah, like in a in a jerky, <laughs> not in a jerky way. I, I've had that reaction from people. Um, like, uh, you know how much I love paddleboarding. Like, that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I do trades for paddleboards all the time and stuff. And this this last time I I sold one of my paddleboards and bought another one. There's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there was this guy I, I had to drive down to Huntington Beach to pick it up. And after about four phone calls, uh, you know, he's and he was one of these guys, you know, I have this paddleboard next to my Bentley and my Maserati, you know, so it's well taken care of. And I was like, OK, I have it next to my Kia Sedona. So, You're like, like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we shouldn't even be texting right now, you know. But by the end of that, like um, I knew that he had two friends, Marianne and William who were in the hospital with COVID at the time. And he had another buddy who had just died from COVID. And I found myself, it was actually at a high school football game. And I, I couldn't get away from the announcers. It was when I saw you, I saw you at the game right afterwards. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. before I snuck down <laughs> around the field, found a little spot away from the, and I, I called him to talk about the deal next day. Uh, Cause I was going to drive to Huntington beach and get this paddleboard. And he told me about this and I just said, whoa, let's stop for a second. I don't care if I ever see this paddleboard. I am so sorry for what you're going through. Like, tell me the name of the friend that you lost. I am going to pray for you. And like, I was almost in tears, you know, and this is somebody, he didn't tell me what he did, but he was like, you know, I negotiate huge deals all week where it's just people wrestling. And he goes, I can't wait to do this deal with you because I've met someone who cares about people. Right. And on one hand, I'm like, I hope he did not see that as a manipulative maneuver. Right. And so so when I went to his house, like to pick up the thing. I just sat around. I, I probably I had a lot to do that afternoon. I just spent over an hour and a half with him yeah. just learning about him and, and asking him. his friend. And the first thing I when I got there, there was nothing about a paddleboard. The first thing I said was, how are your friends? How are they doing? Um, and, and how are you, you know? And the funny thing is I'll never talk to this guy again, right? But, right. but in, in the course of negotiating this deal, and he was a hard bargainer, like, oh my gosh, like it took a lot of conversation and all this kind of stuff. We both came away feeling like we had a win-win, right. like the deal went well, like I, I wasn't trying to hose the guy or anything, but um, I stood my ground, and we both worked it out. And then we both also felt like we made a friend through it all. That's so. Awesome. Yeah. Instead of leaving with this big board on my car and him saying, oh, so glad that guy's gone. You know, I thank God it was a porch pickup and I never talked to him, you know, all that stuff. Like he literally said, Hey, will you do me a favor? And his last words were when you get out there with your kids in the Harbor and you're paddling, will you just shoot me a picture so I can see how much you're loving the board. And I'm like, yeah. 
how cool is this, right? So, so when you live a life of worship like that, now that's one of the times I've gotten it right. I can give you 50, I haven't, right? Yeah. But um, when you live a life of worship, it, I think it naturally draws people in to go, there's, there's something different. And one of the things that disturbs me about the modern church is I think we've taken so many like angry stands on things, like, like whether we're right or wrong, like the, there's what you believe and then the way you hold your belief. Right. And we're worshipful in what we believe a lot of times, but we're not worshipful in the way we hold it. Right. Um, it's so interesting what you said. Um, and I'm going to let you go here in a minute because I've got a, a friend, Grace, who's going to come on and she's actually going to sing some worship songs that she can't wait. Like we're going to wrap the hour up with songs. Can't but, um, yeah. but one of the things that I have made a decision for in my life as an act of worship is to do what you did to that man, to just sit and listen, to sit in moments that, so I have this, it's almost like, I think I became an actor because I'm so sensitive. Like my EQ, my, my emotional quote or whatever is just so high. I walk into a room and I can read it in a, a nanosecond. Yep. And tell where everybody is emotionally in mm -hmm. the room. And I'm the guy who like tries to, you know, make everything mm -hmm. right. Like I'm like, well, I yep. think if I'm, if I'm, I can, I can be the leader. Mm -hmm. I can be quiet. I can listen, blah, 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 blah. Yep. And that draws on you when you are in my business. And I'm sure as a pastor too, you have this experience where people will come up to you. And when you feel like you're drained by someone, it's like, because you're literally being drained, right? Like you're literally being like, oh, this is so hard to just, I can't. But I'll have these conversations with some people. And instead of feeling fear that they're taking energy away from me, I just started saying, you know what, Lord, if they need my energy, you're going to give me more. I have an abundance. I have an unlimited supply. So I'll be that conduit and I'll just let them drain me all they need and I'll be here. And I've learned to just sit and listen to like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and tell people like, okay, all right, bye, thanks. And then they go do their thing. And whereas before it used to be this like, okay, man, I gotta go. Like I gotta, and I felt off, it would, it would ruin me in a way that, because I was sensitive and I was, I felt oh, mean, yeah. I felt rude and I felt all the things that, and it was yeah. just interesting to, to say, well, how far can you go? Like what happens yeah. if you do give? What happens yeah. if you just sit in it for a minute and listen and ask a couple more questions and really, and be the person that they're like, well, I gotta go. And then you're like, okay, well, it was great talking to you. Totally. Um, you know what Dallas said about that, that grace that is he, he just, he defined grace as, let me see if I can get this right. Dallas Willard said grace was the resources God gives us to do what we should do in the kingdom when we're out of our own resources. Yeah. Right, like, That's what great which is. I think is really smart. And he said, um, well, he was pretty smart, yeah. Um, and he said, saints burn grace like jet fuel, like way more than sinners do, you know? And he didn't mean like there was this hard line between saints and sinners, right? right. right. We're all, like Luther said, was well, simul justus and peccata, right? We're both saint and sinner all the time. He right. meant people who have committed their, actively committed their life to Jesus. We burn grace like a rocket fuel. We're dependent on it. Um, and, and hopefully as we burn that, you know, people can kind of see that there's, <laughs> we're, we're glowing a little hotter or something, you know, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. It's like that metaphor where we think sinners are here and saints are here, but God's mm -mm. like this, you know, oh, exactly nope, right. you guys are all on the same line. Exactly. Um, will you come back and, and talk to me throughout the course of this semester on the Palaha Chautauqua? I know that people were really, really enriched by this conversation, Rich, and uh, I'd love to have yeah. you back on. Yeah, any any time I get to talk with you, it's a good time. Cool. And real quick, where can people, if they wanted to join on Sundays, if this if, if you do go on Facebook Live or something, where can yeah. people join you? Yeah, um, it's the world's smallest church, but you're welcome to be with us on Facebook. It's called Life Song Christian Communities. So if like you go to song. Life Song, like the Casting Crown song, Life Song Christian Communities. If you if you look that up, uh, okay. sometimes but in Newbury Park, I think. Um, okay, do me a favor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you X yourself out. And then after you do, yeah. if you'll just type in, you can comment and just put it in the comments so people can see it. And then they'll, uh, they'll be able to see it. So, so to get myself out of here, I yeah. just hit the X yeah, in the Instagram. Instagram has removed my X. I can't, take, I can't get rid of people. So I, I have to be Holy crap. Life. You could you, just hijack the show if you wanted to. You could, power. Yeah. This could be so, fun. <laughs> um, it was good to be with you, my friend. Good to be with all of you, too. Uh, yeah, God bless Thank you. so much. God bless you, too, brother. Okay. Um.
There we go. And I got one more guest before the show ends. Um, all right, Miss Grace, are you ready? Um, you know Grace, you know my next guest. Hi, Grace. Hey. How are you? I am doing good. How are you, man? I'm really, really good. Thank you so much for coming on and, and being brave enough to share your talents with us yeah. live on, on Instagram. Um, I'm just going to let you take it away. I'm just going to let you close out the show. Okay. Um, and so you feel free to, you can introduce the songs, you can talk about why and how you wrote them, and we can go a little long. So if it, if it runs over five by a couple, whatever, it's fine. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to let you take it. Um, you guys have probably seen Grace. She did a version of the of the traveling alone song. You're not you're not That's... alone. And <laughs> a, a while ago. So anyway, Grace, take it away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one of my favorite things about worship, I learned about there's this study um, where they put heart monitors on choir members and then they had them sing together. And as they sang together, they found that their hearts actually began beating together in unison, which I thought was like this super cool picture of what happens when we worship together. And so in the song, the first song I'm going to sing, I talk about the idea of like when we sing together and worship together, our hearts beat together in unison, which I think is just like super cool. So that's the first song. And then the second song I wrote um, when my grandpa passed away uh, the week after he died, my family, we were just kind of processing uh, that uh that week and we wrote kind of like a hymn together. And so I'm gonna share both of those songs with you guys. Um, so. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, okay. mountain maker and author of all life. Creation was made for this. We worship to remember. We will sing songs to the tune of your glory and the rhythms of Yeah. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Holy cow, Grace. That is so beautiful. Those songs Thank are you. beautiful. Thank you. We need to go live one night. And we'll just get a bunch of people. You just like an hour of worship songs. We'll just oh my God. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your giftings with us. That was such a beautiful way to start the week. And like, mm -hmm. you got me all up. That second song is gorgeous. And then you break thank into you. how great they are. I'm so, <laughs> oh man. I know you <laughs> blessed so many people and people who are going to watch this later. Um, will you just stay on while I pray and then we'll just, I'm just yep. going to hang up at the end of it. So will you just pray with me real quick? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I just want to send you all off with a blessing or a benediction. If you're watching this right now, I don't think it's by accident. I think that there is a God in the universe who loves you so much and he wants to know that you are loved. So I just want to pray for your heart. If it's broken, if it's filled with shame or regret that you will find forgiveness of yourself, that you will be able to let go of the pain and that you will be a person who sees the beauty in the world and reflects it. I want to pray for safety for everybody who's watching this. I want to pray for joy for people who are watching this. I want to, uh, a little special thanks for Grace and for Rich who shared their love and their talents and their just this inner beauty that they've got and the wisdom that they've got and the gifts that you've given them, Lord. Thank you for them. And I just pray that you um, bless the people watching this and help us be light in the world. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have an amazing week, Grace. Thank you for joining me on the Palaha <laughs> Chautauqua. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>